where it's obviously it's the um, 10th of the, the 12th, 23, and I've just had two arguments with somebody, because for, for, they've seen a photograph of me and they're mistaking me as Savan. And then there's been another six people photograph me, and one's got on his phone because he's moaning because I photographed him because he photographed me. Um, then there's been a load of black and blue cars. I nearly had to go back. Heavy setup, constructural force. For a Sunday, it's three times heavier than it usually is for a Sunday. It's more like a Saturday at the busiest time or rush hour. Um, choked by catalytic converter stench. Um, Timing rough fucking negative people in my direction ready to get a knife out to smash the fuck into me and knife my fucking eyes out. Um, every fucking corner I turn. It's only the last three minutes I've actually managed to walk without any problems. And I've been coughed up once. And I might be on the video actually. Um, and um, two spit talkers at me. Three people sneezing nearby. Not directly, but within six feet. This doesn't happen uh, very often, but as soon as I stopped the recording, there was only two other cars, which were black and blue. Um, I would like to say it's been blue skies and sunny all day. The only day it's been really cloudy, but it's sort of torrential and heavy rain, so you can't really go out in it. And that was on the 8th of December. Um, even though you had some sunshine, because there was evening sunshine, and there's about two or three hours of evening sunshine. You got me down as fucking Savan photographed me, mistaking me. How about we go to a fucking proper severe knife attack? You fucking chunky mouth cunt! Two rough people that have just passed about a minute and a half ago photographed me thinking I was Savan and saying he's getting a beating. The catalytic converter hot point is just car up on car, even before I reach the actual gate. So you're not very bloody happy about it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen when I get to the gate, to the actual point of the gateway across. Um, I'm being choked by catalyst converter black sec, timed by colour of car incidentally. Um, so, hold on. I just want to mention something. This, this doesn't always apply, this, this can change all the time, but in recent, the recent last couple of months, if I was to say what's the, busy, the quietest day of the week, it would, de it would definitely not be today, which is a Sunday. Um, the likelihood is, if I had to guess, or what I could seem, what seemed to be the less heavy days, is probably a Monday. For this minute in time anyway, and the seasonal increase of problems and trouble and setups and whatever else as well. God's lying to my fucking face saying that you've been and had sex with Stephanie Hill. Saying, Justin, you've been and had sex with Stephanie Jill. But that's not true. The creator God's making mistakes. The bastard's just a coarse fucking screwed up bastard just like his creation. Why do we accidentally step on insects? Why do underwater creatures defecate and urinate in the same water they eat and drink out of? Why do animals go around killing and tearing other animals apart or killing them with poison? You fucking explain that, creator, you evil bastard. There's a possibility I might have that, that um, person who was jogging past actually in, the, in, record, in this recording. It looks identical to the Laura that works at Tesco's or the Laura that works in Tesco's. When I mention that picture, the curse picture, where this Laura is shining the sun on this boy holding a word pad and um, a torch and a, <coughs> a bag across his shoulders where the sun is in that specific painting is to suggest that she's there to help you to get sex basically if that's the right word to use it some form it's not erotic but is a, is a, um, what was it the lady said in um, fucking the other day um, she's seen the picture I, I couldn't record at the time that, that um I was doing it because um, there was people in the queue behind, there was people either side, there was people watching me and I couldn't really get the camera out to um, film what she was saying um, at Yandles. Um, uh, anyway, it's not going to come true is it, I'm 43 years of age.
Nobody accepts their age gap and accepts that you've been sexually abused as a child. Some people won't even go with people that have been abused as a child, like myself. And they won't go with people that haven't been in relationships or are not mature. And they're all single mothers and they're all not clean themselves and they all have a different accent. I don't like this sort of accent that most people have. It's all dry and sarcastic or I've been in a relationship, married type accent. I don't hate that sort of accent. I've had my throat cut, to be fair. Jesus has fallen, there's nothing I can do about it. But, um, anyway, I'm up here. I haven't been up this part for a long time. Um, so... Oh yeah, that's something else while I'm here. You see that graffiti there? It says, beware, Eastville Rapist. That was there before... It's possible it was there before I actually moved to Yeovil. Because that graffiti was fading the very first time I saw it and it was only what six months nine months when I first moved here that I discovered this on the tree because this Laura or Laura and it's very difficult to explain what she looks like um, I thought I'd um, just give you some idea of people obviously these people don't look like Laura or Laura but these would be the nearest descriptions if I was to choose out of people that I've known or to some extent seen or spoken to at some point in my life in different sections. So we'll start with um, school friends I used to know. Um, right, probably Stephanie Jill, Stephanie Hill, though I don't really know her that well because um, I left Elmwood School in 1993-ish and it wasn't until once in uh, Taunton Bowling, where I saw her again when I was with a snap group connected with the school that I was at, Avalon School. But then we were all tied to our one section of where the bowling was and she didn't hear me when I said all right to her. And I can't guarantee 100% that was her, incidentally. Um, they had a music track playing at that time. Kenobe slip into something more comfortable, which is... Um, um, contemporary classical I think it is right that would be the nearest person from Elmwood School Avalon School there's literally no one I could put to that description um, college nothing um, out of family members nearest family members or relatives that I've known or relatives that have, were, were not rel were relatives or their friends sorry that have fallen out with me I'd probably say Amanda Millis, who's probably had her name changed since that time. Celebrities, I'd probably say Britney Spears, how she would have looked back then, is probably the nearest celebrity that I could fit to the description of that um, Laura or Lauren that works in Tesco's at Highbridge. You know, when I mentioned that sun curse, I've been Tess saying. Um, out of people that have worked at Thorn House, which is supported housing where I live, I'd probably say the staff worker that goes by the name of Bex is probably the nearest description to um, this um, lady that works at Tesco's. Because she has a sort of in-between phase between Stephanie Jill and Bex is sort of the two mixed together to create a sort of person look-alike. Hard to describe. Um out of um, I think that's about it because I don't really know many people there's probably loads of faces I've seen the people that look like her in the town or whatever but out of people that I've actually spoken to in my life that's it there has been this question and it has been raised in the past not so much in the last 10 years uh, we've got to look how it is uh, in the last 3 years I can't go uh, for last year because of, or this year because nothing's really there's not been any suggestions to apply who likes me better or doesn't because most people just hate me anyway but the nearest type of woman that likes me in my 30s uh, to, to some extent you know a person walking past in the street would be the sort of dark haired sexual looking face a smiley type woman that's uh, sort of like the type that like the new age or dresses a witch sometimes but of a sexual type if you get what I'm saying that sort uh, probably the nearest type that have li liked me from the age of 35 to the age I am now. Um, if we go back before that, I've never actually been liked by blonde people. 
the, uh, in my whole life, believe it or not. Amy Weston was like um, a friend that I had when I was a child, but she she doesn't really like me, and obviously they, she's a different type of person. I'm out of sort of similar blonde. We had this Gemma that I've mentioned, but obviously she's made it clear she doesn't like me anyway, so there's basically nobody else that's blonde hair that's ever liked me in my whole life. That's my whole life since school days right through to now. I've never been liked by blonde people or sexual women that are blonde. Anyway, there has been a Britney Spears lookalike, identical to Britney Spears. How she would have was, you know, so, I mean, she was a really sexual type. So, yeah, you think, oh, yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, that's sexy. Or what, the, you know, would have said back in that time. <coughs> About 15 years ago, a lady that was roughly my age, um, or a bit older, I'm not sure, could be younger, but very, very sexual, smooth skin. She actually smiled at me as she passed. That is, believe it or not, the only Britney Spears type of person that has ever smiled or liked me while walking past. It's only ever happened once, and it happened on a day trip when me, my brother, or whoever, and my dad went somewhere, I can't remember where it was, and that's where it happened too. Um, it was definitely when my brother was in, coming as well, my real brother, so. Um, so you have that. Um, and quite literally, in recent times, uh, I mean, there's a few different types, a few other types that like me to some extent, but not not anymore. Um, there's a girl called Izzy Simpson on telly. Uh, you might get liked by that type to some extent, but there are people that are rough that would have liked me as well, you know. Um, not in the last, since 2015 onwards, when I, since I've been mistaken as Sufem. But you know, the sort of gypsy type people that have that serious accent. Uh, believe it or not, some of those types of people actually like me. Sort of people that are in their 40s. So a bit like, um, I don't know really, some, um, I'm trying to think of some people that are like it. I mean, sort of 90s, sort of rough. You don't want to mess with our sort of family. But, you know, not the dry and sarcastic accent, you know, the gypsy accent, the 90s sort of accent. I've actually been liked by that type of person. When it comes to fat women, uh, the negative type, the type I don't actually fancy, well, it doesn't make any difference, to be honest, because I've never actually been liked by that type either. Lisa Pike's probably the only person of that type that has liked me. Um, so, I mean, I should go in a long story, of, a long story into this, but I'm just going to give you the basics for now. I'll do another video at another time, because this is mainly to... to, to mainly to... Dis to explain today. I might as well say what is the um, nearest person that's like me for 2023, shall I? Well, believe it or not, there hasn't been a sexual person that's like me in 2023, nor for 2022. Not even basic attraction. In fact, most negative people don't like me either. But if I was to say, for this year, the nearest person that's liked me, obviously this is not a single person, and it would be someone that's married, but the nearest person that's like me to some extent would be um, someone that looks similar to um, Lisa Pike. I wouldn't say though Lisa Pike. Lisa Pike would be the nearest um, version of, or nearest suggestion to it, to this person. Um, but this person would have been a lot more smoother sexual skin and more sexual appearance in the face. But obviously married, maybe a few years younger than me. Um, that's probably about it. I don't actually recall that being any specific people did just look at you like you're a sick piece of shit or a piece of work off the floor that you need to be knifed down or dead or you're a rapist sort of that attitude or look or that evil look or that get out of my way look you you you've done the wrong look it's mostly been that last two years um but to if i had to choose out of anybody at all the nearest person that, that to like me would probably be what i just described has there ever been an enemy so just a minute, okay, get out of the frets a minute, get frets from the house calling me a Peter Farm rapist, so this is farmhouse, but nothing you can do about it, get it all the time. Anyway, um, has there ever been an enemy that has ever claimed that I've done this or done this to a woman or a girl that they're actually in a sexual relationship with? The answer is yes, and it's not just a couple of people either. Think of the Palace Nightclub and think of all the... Uh, Females, everyone turned against me going back to 15 years or more. 
a go, they got on with them all. Anyone I've known, or even we're well, not known as such, but any anyone I've sort of spoken to or sort of said alright to, or like in the neighbourhood or whatever, North Peverton or whatever, they've made damn well sure that they've got with those sexual people and left me with nothing since birth. So basically, the only sex I've had since birth is being sexually abused as a child and being nailed as a child rapist and child molester, a woman rapist and a woman molester, and to threaten to break my teeth in, to smash me to pieces, to knife me to the fucking floor, to shoot me dead, to, to, to tell me that I should be a, a sick cunt that's starving in Africa, dying in my next life, being raped as a child in my next life after I've been shot dead in this life, and that you're just sick. Just then many, just like the threats, basically. I, uh, every threat basically, 99.9% .9 of all threats I've had anyway is sexuality anyway, so basically this is just a, an example of what I state every day, every problem I've had for the last um, how many fucking years, so but yeah, that explains but yeah, my enemies have got in relationships with the girls and the ladies that they've accused me of raping or whatever in the past, yes and they made them single mothers, and most of those people have turned against me anyway um to tell me I'm a sick bastard with the um, Sabem threat now. Yeah, so it's so like people ask these questions, but these are sort of questions I don't really go into that de deep because it's family and obviously it's mostly stuff that's kept private. But if they were to ask, uh, is there any family left that like me? You've still got my mum, my dad, my brother. So they're sort of three that will uh, always sort of be uh, uh, part of the family. My nan's recently died, so... Uh, I did get on very well with Nan as well. It's very rare I see Uncle Dave and Roz, um, or Jay and Matt. And when we move on to the Dando side of the family, it becomes a little bit more darker and they don't like me that much. Um, but it's not as bad as what it used to be in the days when I was accused of raping Sadie, or having sex with Sadie Dando when I, when I haven't fucked her. Um, uh, when it goes to anything else, I think... The, you know, the friends of that side of the family or anything on the partner side of maybe a couple of people um, on the deeper side of the family um, it's not so great at all and if we go down deeper and not too far deeper, say three families down to people I don't know but are actually connected to some area of relatives that don't really like me or whatever then we go into the Savem business or the Savem threats or people that are really nasty. So, you know, it's a mixed up area, but at least you've got your family. That's the main thing. Um, so that's that on that. Right. We've got this question which people have asked in the past and I just want to put an answer to this one as well. Have I ever had a sex partner in my life? Well, obviously, you know the answer to that. But have I ever had a partner, a, fr a friend who's female, even though it's never gone into any sexual activity? Well, the, this is difficult because right through the start of my childhood, until I was about the age of 22, quite literally, taking Lisa Pike out of the equation a minute, there's actually never been anyone single, full stop, that's a sexual looking type or basic looking type, right through my childhood. No matter where you go, who you speak to, there would never ever be anyone single. So you'd be having to wait for someone to either come out of a relationship or someone new to pass, <coughs> pass by. But there were, there was a couple of people that go back to Willavington. Now this is a really interesting story. I think the lady, the, the lady was called Polly and she was roughly my age. She was a blonde girl at that time. Unfortunately, she won the lottery, or she came into lots of money, and she moved out the area before I had a chance to speak or say anything, or, or whatever, which would have been in 1996, sort of time period, maybe 95, 97, I can't remember the actual year, it's, it's definitely a long, long time ago. So she obviously found a chap um, from a richer from a celebrity source or someone that's, well, I don't know if it's a celebrity as such, but someone that's, you know, where she, because she won the money, she turned against me basically and they moved straight out of that village. But they still visited on occasions, either before or after they won that money. And then there was, they were never to be seen ever again or heard of, even when I asked a question. 
um, when I was asking John and a couple of other friends at that time, they said they haven't heard of, they just said she just sh shot off. She, their mom and their family got into money. They shot off and not, and they didn't come back, come back again. So that's what happened there. Um, so that was put through. Um, obviously, that's basically, there might be a few other things that are similar to what I'm just mentioning, but I, I can't, at the top of my head, actually remember. But I do recall that nearly every person that I've known in my life has been in a sexual relationship. Especially, so when I was battery went flat. So when I was um, 22, you literally, there's been nobody single right through that time. Um, there was a time where I was speaking to Carrie Moore, but she, she didn't really like me that much. She was just sort of a friend. Um, this goes back at Avalon School. Um, there was Stephanie Jill, Stephanie Hill, which is mentioned on a regular basis. Unfortunately, I left that school and I've only seen her a couple of times since that, you know, that time. So I saw her once, as I mentioned earlier, at Taunton Bowling. If that was her, I can't guarantee 100% it was, but, it, um, but I think it was. Um, and the other occasion was obviously this walking in Bridgewater in the charity shops when I moved to West Street, basically. But before I sort of had a chance to chat to her or anything like that, threats were coming in, saying that I claimed I raped her, and taking the piss out of her, cause saying that she has a mental disability, or, so, so, you know, people were nasty in those days, so people would insult her. And at times I saw her, it was always t at times when my enemies were passing me, or inconvenient times where it's too dangerous to speak, or, you know, people, I was actually feeling dangerous, and, and I had to avoid the situation and move from the area, and it quite literally happened every time I walked into her. Obviously today, unfortunately, she she has she is a part she does have a partner, but because of her age, she is actually negative attraction now. So it's too late for that anyway. Even if that if you wanted to think that you had nothing in your whole life and you want you know that you could get something, would well, it be too late for that because obviously the attraction she is is the type that's a bit like that Lisa Pike now on that um, picture. But only in the last couple of years. Just before I moved, she still held that sexual appearance out until she was what in her mid to high 30s but now it's, it's quite literally it's too late now um she has been in a relationship with a, other people now i don't know the stories ins and out of this and i don't want to cause trouble saying that i'm right or wrong on this but i think she's been with dave franklin who is my dad's partner esme's son who's just one year younger than me called david john Pan franklin obviously he departed from the family and obviously I haven't seen him for a long, long time because he's moved back to Wales, in Cardiff. Um, I won't go into any details, obviously, without his permission to any further than that. But there's a small possibility that he might got got in a relationship with her back in 2003 area. Because he knew Samantha Morrissey and a few others at that time. But like I say, not my business to go into their stories. Just uh, to mention that, basically. And the other one is Jason Dandy. Uh, Jason Dando might have been in a relationship with her as well, um, Elmwood School. And, uh, it's only due to something that slipped up once that made me think that. But he still hasn't slipped up to a point where he's made it clear that he's been with that specific person and has always been kept quiet. But to what I can make out, he has been mentioned, it has accidentally been mentioned by Carol in the past, going back many years ago. So i got to look at the possibility that that's true as well. However, I don't know for certain if that's true. Um, there is um, another person. It's not a person I've really spoken to, to be honest. It's called Lisa Parker, but I knew her at Elmwood School. Um, there, was, there has actually been threats um, to tell me that if I ever speak to her, or get involved or speak to her, that um, I'd be hit out or be smashed in if we go back 15 plus years ago when I was getting threats. I don't quite understand why. I've not actually uh, spoken to her, and I don't really fancy her that much. However, I am told that she's quite a sexual-looking person. But like I said, I've not seen her for many years, so I can't say for sure what she looks like. But to my knowledge, she doesn't appear to be the sort of type I'd go for. Right, if I can get through this without having loud bikes tied to an erection, I would mention the next thing that I want to mention. There's a girl that's not sexy at all, not sexual at all. Um, she went to Elmwood School. And it hasn't been mentioned that often, but there have been, a, it's been mentioned a couple of times, a few times, but not enough to put it down as a regular threat or, you know, more of a one off threat. But even though, because it's been said, and it's been said about, I don't know how many times it's been said, I've forgotten, but 
they tell me that I should be with, uh, um, oh, what's her name again? Um, Claire Robottom or Claire Robotham. Now, obviously, she's one of those that's pretty more severe. Um, not my type. However, I won't go into details of um, that, but I will mention that I have actually have had the threat to be told to go with that specific person in the past. Um, so that's it on that. When it comes to Tara Bowerman, actually she went into negative attraction quite quickly, to be, to be honest. Um, I mean, even when she was in her late teens, you could see that she wasn't going to turn out very pretty. And quite maybe the way she was born, or the sort of just seemed to have that sort of appearance where she went straight into negative attraction at an early age. Um, she didn't have it very good at Elmwood School because Mr. Ormisher got into the public, uh, into the um, cabin toilets, and did things which weren't very good. And I was uh, pretending to, um, uh, you know, go outside. And I was, I went back up the steps, and I could hear what was going on. So yes. One day, I um, went up the steps, because take, take into account I was only about 12 at the time, I um, decided to not pretend to be a police officer and went up the steps and knocked the door and uh, Mr Ormisher went, Oh! <gasps> he went like that. And then Tara told me the following uh, day or later on that you scared the shit out of Mr Ormisher. So she, he was definitely in the loo with her. And also Mr. Rooks took a liking to Tara Bowerman as well, back in those days. Now obviously, I don't mind talking about it, because these people aren't around anymore. Because it's their age, and they've, uh, they're not, you know, they can't do nothing. But uh, yes, uh, you did have some funny school teachers um, in, in, in that time. And obviously, because Tara was a sort of blonde girl that the teachers fancied, you know, they saw her as being the sexiest, um, go in school so yes you did have there was a lot more of it in those days but since that time they put cctv cameras in schools um the smartphone and obviously so they're much safer places moving on to vicky fisher who was also at elmwood school who's a couple of years older than me i don't know much about vicky but she did go to monkton prior school when i sort of was up there when i was very young um she liked me for the first two weeks when she started Elmwood School and then she hated me from there onwards and treated me like a piece of dirt. And she also got into a relationship with the uh, my ex-mugger. So um, I don't know how true that is, mind. I still don't know how true that is, 100%. But, uh, and also, when I, I've been thinking that my ex-mugger's Dan Morgan all these years, some people are saying that he's been named Dan Wilson as well. And like every time he saw me, which was basically nearly every day, um, in the 1999 period to 2000, he'd ask for money or he'd get an ask and say, push me in the room power I think it's changed a bit since then. I haven't had too much trouble from him. However, there has been a lot of uh, increased trouble just six months before I moved from Burnham to where I am now. So it's hard to say how the future would look with that, but it seems like things are on a turn, even though he's been calm for the last six years from that time period before I moved there. So, um, that's that. Um, there's one person I didn't get on with at Avalon School too much too well. Um, his name's called Peter, we Peter John Wheeler. Now, at the time he lived at Crew Kern. And he was having sex with Natalie, who was uh, not much younger, only about four years younger. But she was like a blonde type, you know, the sort of blonde girl type, the sort of where he fancied her and, uh, he slipped up once saying that we'll be able to come to mind so we can have sex later on. Which really annoyed me to be honest because um, I didn't say nothing. I've never had. I've sort of kept this quiet all the time. But um, I mean there's uh, obviously they're both school children so you can't really sort of complain about it. But um, you know that's that basically. Um, so you know I haven't seen him since. I don't know what he's like, but apparently, according to other of the school friends that I've spoken to, they don't really have too much to do with him. He has his own sort of life. I'm going to go cut it there, because obviously I'm not going to go, go into his private business or anything like that, because I'm only going to mention the sort of stuff that when in the school days is like a history documentary of what I'm doing on this video. Right, back to um, Avalon School. 
Mrs. Pavey has actually had sex with uh, Annie Cooper at that school. Actually, I tried adding Annie Cooper um, on Facebook going back quite a few years ago. It was not recent. It was in the early days of when I started Facebook. She doesn't remember me. And uh, obviously since, what, about five plus years ago, a bit more than that now, and possibly even ten, she's actually started going into negative attraction pretty quick. So that's, uh, that's through as well. And obviously Catherine... I've forgotten her surname now because she's changed it and I've forgotten what it was. Um, she, I think it was Fowler, I'm not sure. I've even forgot her original surname. Where she had a boyfriend and uh, she said, um, basically, her boyfriend got nasty with me. But he didn't do it in a nasty way. He says, she doesn't remember you from Avalon School and saying you've never been to that school. And then I sort of said, well, what about Lisa Pike? And he sort of, the boyfriend said in a kind way, to be nasty, but to be, you know, to get that Lisa Pike off my mind. He said, we're saying you can't have Catherine. And saying, since you've never been to that school, you can forget Lisa as well. So if anyone starts on you with about Lisa, just tell them to contact me and I'll fucking deal with it. He said something like that. It wasn't that, but it was something similar. So he was sort of sticking up for me with that. Because obviously he knew that Lisa Pike was negative attraction. He had some sort of respect. But you've also got to take into account... This is before the Savannah and the Emperor came in. So people were a bit more nicer to me back in that time. So I just wanted to mention that. Right, now to names and clairvoyant predictions. I'm just going to go through the names, not the actual readings, of uh, what clairvoyants have given me. Right, we start with um, the earliest clairvoyance. I can't remember what it was. About 2006, something like that. The very first one I had was at Bridgewater Fair. And uh, I was predicted, I think it was Chloe, a blonde girl called Chloe, um, saying that it's definitely going to, you're going to get a person, it's your time has come for this person. And this goes back at that time. I've still got no one. And still got to be with people that, you know, I won't go into any further than that, you already know. But that, that fell through. The reading, the rest of the reading, I couldn't really remember. But I don't think it was that accurate. I don't think it was as accurate as other readings I had. Another one was at Cannington. So the, that was the next one. So my mum picked me up when, his, uh, when her boyfriend was able to drive. And we went there for a psychic reading. I was predicted um, a lady called Stephanie. At that time I was a bit annoyed by it because of all the threats this Stephanie's had and all the rest of it. I thought this will only cause trouble and, you know, and whatever. And, you know, my mind wasn't thinking... You know, it's too dangerous to do this, and you know, you didn't want to feel like you were stupid or, you know, th things were going on. It was just too, the situation wasn't good. So I just, at that time, I thought that's not going to come true. And he predicted that for the next two years. And that two year period has gone up as it's gone or went, went through. The next one was Bridgewater Fair again. Uh, another, another prediction of the Lady Clo. Um, what happened there after that? Um, God, um, what was the next prediction? Um, so then, I um, uh, can't remember, two sex. Right, in the next time period, so sort of between 2010 and 2012, there was a couple of readings I had, and they were sort of predicting girlfriends and saying that your time's come, saying that you've, and actually some saying that my life's not actually been that good, actually. Some were saying that it's been quite a tough life, even though you haven't had to work or do stuff like that, and saying that, they're saying, you have had quite a bad life, you know, with all the difficulties. But that's before my life got 50 times worse, by the way. But we'll come to that later on or in another documentary. Which is not about clairvoyance at the moment. Well, I can't remember the names of what was predicted in that time period. But uh, they were putting him through with um, stuff like... Um, it was before the pure explosion clairvoyance. So um, they were putting it through with, like, closing shops taking bus routes on, causing enemies to, wait, enemies to wait outside on days to stop me, basically. To stop the cause happening, basically, of any sexuality or girlfriends. Because back in that time, the police were arresting me and they were telling me I was a sick bastard when they were arresting me without, without any help, without any criminal record or evidence to confirm that I've ever had sex with or ever beaten women up or whatever. But they had that theory back in that time that I was a woman beater and a child rapist and all that sort of stuff and uh, this is why they didn't take it nasty so any sheets I left like my writing problems or threats I was getting 
even though they knew it was happening, they didn't give a fuck. They were trying to find anything they could do to arrest me and all the rest of it at that time. They've even caused me to lose documentation, sections of my life story deep depression page pack where they wiped my computer off when they took it in because they needed to check my computer because they were uh, concerned on the communications act or whatever and, and all di different types of things. They just got nasty back in that time period. And then obviously in 2008 on Valentine's Day, I genuinely did accidentally keep a knife in my pocket and it was genuine because I put my other coat on you see because I was washing the other one. I forgot I left a knife in the pocket, right? And I was either cutting some wires or a cheese and onion sandwich before I actually left it in the pocket, right? I went out forgetting I had that in, on my, in my pocket. And it was the only time I actually took the weapon out, by the way. And I got arrested because I punched a church window through because I was being charted as saying I'm being smashed out and I'm a child molester. And I didn't know it was Valentine's Day at the time that I got um, um, arrested. But they grabbed me told me I'm a sick bastard, it would be my, my, be, be my pleasure to fucking smash you in and knock you to the fucking floor right now. But uh, since there's a police car there, we're going to get this, we're going to get you arrested and fucking in jail, you sick, je you fucking sick child molester. And this is before the Savannah and Liam threat. This is threats under Jungle Justin. And uh, yeah, it got nasty, but I was calm about it. There's a load of setups. They increased the setups as we're going there. Seagulls are going ha ha and telling me to fuck people that rape me as a child, or saying fuck other people, or plurating, or other names as well on top of that. While and loud bikes to erections, while in police custody, custody and uh, magistrates caught on other occasions, I was arrested, uh, which has gone on right through since that time, on and off. But I've never gone to jail because there's been no reason for me to go to jail because I've done anything wrong. Apart from graffiti and retaliation, that's all they can do with me for, really. I'm well, posting a CD for a letterbox once. I got in trouble for that. That went to magistrate's court and all the rest of it because, obviously, it has sexual content and the person wasn't very happy. But the reason I did it is because I was being threatened to be smashed in and bashed out nastily because of sexuality. And believe it or not, that person that actually shouted that, I don't know if it's Neil or someone else, but he does actually look like one of the neighbours at my place. Uh, although he's a lot rougher than that neighbour at my place at the moment, even though times can be tough when I mention that specific neighbour or other people that are causing trouble outside. Anyway, now we get back to the clairvoyance of uh, 2012. Laura was predicted both... No, Chloe, sorry. 2011, tw tw can't, no, 2011, Chloe was predicted again. They took off the um, carnival to because there was a fuel explosion on the M5 to North Peverton. And I sort of picked up on that. She said she said it's going to be on carnival night. And I sort of picked up on that, and I thought, maybe it's on that reading. But when the time came, Chloe was actually single. She was about 18, sexual blonde woman, smooth skin or whatever you want to call it, back at that time. Because I was younger, there wasn't really that much of an age gap, and it wouldn't have been a problem. But the, they took it, passed it through, and then what? Come a couple of months later, it's too late. She got her girlfriend, her boyfriend at the Palace nightclub and is now a single mother. And in fact, where she's in her 30s now, she's actually gone into negative attraction at a very young age. I don't know why these people are going in negative attraction at young ages, but they are. So that's true. 2012, I can't remember what the reading was. 2013, Sue Hud at uh, Healing Weekend in July of that uh, 2013 uh, from 2016 onwards when I went to the healing weekend I've had to stop going now altogether because I've been accused of theft and I'm being mistaken as Savannah and it's getting nasty every time I go there since the year 2016 and that year but 2016 a lot of the threats all were, was sort of just no name mentioned however anyway that reading's through as well as we go to Laura at Tesco's, as I mentioned earlier. Maybe she was predicting that. Well, whatever it was that reading was supposed to be, it never came true, and I didn't go with that Laura because she went with Mike because she started thinking I was Savan, and then she had two children with ginger hair, and obviously she doesn't like me at all either anyway, since that time, because she thinks, you know, just like everybody else had turned, it's the same problem. Then I was predicted Gemma and or Heather. Um, this is one that's actually been on the internet. Uh, and actually, and Sue had one's been on the internet on YouTube. First confirmation. I still have the recordings. 
So at some point I will put them on YouTube again. I've got to look them up because some of these recordings got lost where I lost half of my life story packs due to computer crashes or whatever in the past. And it happens at times which are not good because people can make stuff up in that time period, you know. And, you know, that has happened. And I haven't had the evidence to back me up even though I've already stated this stuff and, and a chunk has been lost because of whatever happening, like USB sticks breaking or hard, well, you know, not so much hard drives, but computers or whatever. So, and then basically, from this sort of time, there's one clairvoyant that said, one time, when you're in your 40s, you're going to start a sex late in life. And I thought to myself, I wasn't very happy with the reading, but that reading through as well. She said, in, when you're in your early 40s, you're going to find someone, and she's going to love you. There's going to be someone you can have sex with. And I thought to myself, what, in that time, what, when I'm that age? You know, and that's a reading in 2015. Well, even that's true, because she said early 40s. Well, I am in my early 40s, but not for much longer. You know, next couple of years. And uh, most of the readings in recent times have either been Gemma or Heather up until just before I moved to Yeovil. And basically every reading I've had since that time has basically basically been slammed down to the floor, been been told that I, that I can't have the readings, refunded by clairvoyance on eBay. And uh, when it comes to... Um, you know, going to Glastonbury or the healing weekend, I can't even go to healing weekend now because the accusations of theft in 2022 and ph photographs taken of me saying that I'm being smashed in for stealing when I'm, when I'm nothing to do with the stealing and being told I'm surveying and whatever else. It was going haywire. I literally had about 150 threats or something like that just that day and that's when I was going with my father and at times I wasn't walking with him. Just every other person was starting on me thinking I was surveying. But, um... It's not a place I can go back to, because if I go back there, even though I didn't still, they're going to report me to the police and have me going down. I've already had to contact the police. I've let the st staff and uh, supported housing know and the social worker know about this at that time. Anyway, um, they refuse to give me readings now, most clairvoyants, in Glastonbury uh, throughout 2022 and 2023. At times I've gone, they said they've had to shut the shop for five minutes or they're, they're shutting the shop now and saying, or saying, well, no, you're not having a reading. They're saying we're not having sad people have reading, giving sad people like you readings and, you know, stuff like that without even, so, you know, and they're thinking I'm Savan. Well, if they're psychic and clairvoyance, they should know what my name is. But no, it's been like that. So the last two years, I've not actually had any prop, proper clairvoyant readings and I rarely have them at all. I don't even pay for them anymore. Because any reading I have now is just down to the floor. Like, your life's going to get worse. You just have to accept that in life. That things are going to be hard for you. You're not going to get a partner. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, well, you've been sexually abused all your life and you're being treated like that. All the predictions are low. And you're thinking to yourself, um, pointless wasting your money on predictions where your life's just going to be fucking... Where, you, where, the, where the readings are rock bottom, basically. So basically, that's the best it gets when it comes to clairvoyance. So that completes uh, today. I might have another clairvoyant reading at some point. But isn't, you, I can tell you now, most of them are not look for anything to look forward to anymore. All the, the only thing that comes true is the negative side of the story all the time. And that was occurring before they stopped offering readings. But, um, you know, that's the way it is. Right, now we're going to go to the subject of when did I start feeling low in life. Well, initially, it was 2003 due to the, all the problems between 2001 and 2002 and 2003. Yes, 2003 was a very bad time period where I was feeling low and I was actually very on the edge of suicidal as well, shall we say. Yes, things were bad, certainly. And it was all the problems that were, that were ganging up on the estate, people starting on me and all the rest of it because of sexuality and nailing me as a sick bastard or whatever, even though I've never had sex in my whole life. So yeah, 2003 is one of the milestones that uh, can never be forgotten. Um, whether it's the actual worst this time period, we need to look at future days, which are much worse. Uh, um, but for violence in one period of time, that was definitely one of the time periods that I'll never forget. When I moved to West Street in Bridgewater 2006, you had the Palace Nightclub threats, you've had all the rest of it and all the rest of it. And uh, at times I felt uh, unsafe and I did nighttime walks down the canal until it was six o'clock in the morning or um, I'd go to my dad's in the evening or I'd drink extra special brew until I was actually pissed because I, you know, was drinking three cans and special brew strong stuff, 9% at the time. So yes, you'd get pissed and I'd get pissed every night and go to bed pissed. So yeah, I, I would have been pissed. 
and I'd have that as like um, something to look forward to while putting up with these threats. But they started to die down in 2011, 2012 area. I wish I stopped time and allowed bike time to an erection. I'm getting pissed off of it. I haven't done it too bad today, um, but that has been about 100 in total for the whole day. But you know, it's a time when it does occur, it is fucking irritating. Um, so it's one of the um, less loud bike days, but it's being timed in particular to the impulse is time to an erection. Right, so if so, when we go back to suicidal stage, I, say, I felt really low. One of the time periods I was feeling low, but I wasn't suicidal, it's just really low. Um, I think I get, sort of 2003 was bad. And 2002, 2001 area. That period built up to 2003, but 2003 in particular was very bad. Um, and 2004 wasn't great either. Um, and when I stayed at my nan's the first time around, which was in 2003, I didn't feel over great then either. Um, you know, I didn't let people know as such. I was just calm, just you know, just being normal. But I, I can tell you now, inside. You were like thinking of ways where to go to or without telling people and it was it wasn't good um but i've never hit anyone i've never you know i've never got aggressive or anything like that i think the only thing that i did that was naughty in 2003 was on a very bad days where i kicked the um hospital door for them to open it after i hit the roof because something went on and i was being disbelieved that the threat was occurring and i wasn't very happy at that time um, that's the only, only thing I did wrong in 2003. Right, the next stage of when I was feeling a bit, bit suicidal, you know, I said that West Street wasn't good or anything like that, would have been 20... about 20, late 2017. Uh, that Although I didn't have the threats or aggression or, or people starting on me as bad as 2003, I was just moaning and complaining about my age, thinking I was too old, I'm too old to have anyone. I'm going to have to be sexually abused as a child and, you know, kill myself and accept that Jesus is going to rape me as a child again in my next life through perverts that rape me in my next life. Thinking to myself, thanks for fucking turning Christ. Thanks for fucking sexually abusing me and stopping me get sex all my life. That's all I could think of at that time. So, in that time period, I was feeling down. Then we had sort of a snowstorm. It got cold. It snowed in 2018. And then you had that prostitute who scammed me who didn't give me proper sex and made six moves just to get 800 quid out of me before um, I had to report it to Action Fraud. And obviously she was negative looking, as I mentioned, which she called herself Jeanette. The neighbours at my old place think it's a scam that Dan set up. I don't know if they mean Dan, my ex or mugger, or another Dan, but they think it's to get money so that the old neighbour can move out so the new neighbour can move in. But which way around it was, I don't know. Because one of the neighbours that made the gun sounds stopped making the gun sounds and didn't say nothing and I had no problems for the next two years from that specific neighbour until I actually moved. Um, maybe once in six months there'd be an issue, but it wouldn't be like it was before that time. So that was the next stage and I was sort of feeling low. But the lowest I've actually felt in my whole life, believe it or not, is 2022 and 2023, which is the last two years. Out of all those years that I mentioned, 2022, 2023 are the two lowest years because obviously my age, my life, the amount of threats I'm getting, the amount of people photographing me, the amount of people mistaking me as for Seven. I mean, we're looking, we're looking at 150 threats on a, on a bad day. We're looking at over 100 people photographing me on a bad day, mistaking me as Seven, you know, with their smartphones. And all this is linking into more trouble and even more trouble, as I mentioned earlier on this recording, when I shot and the shouting that you heard me when I shouted back at that person. So after that person didn't say much after that, he just said a few fucking words nastily, shouted it. We didn't say it shouted as much, but kind of shouted it initially. And then just calmed down and said, oh, wait, I'll get back to you because I'm going to fucking have you and something like that. And actually, I forgot to mention that in there. But I was, I was too busy trying to concentrate on the threat. Um, so, um, yeah, 2022 and 2023. Yeah, actually, well, no, from March 2022 onwards to now. The lowest I've felt in my life in out of all time is December 2022 and uh, although I haven't felt suicidal at the moment rather than suicidal I just feel like you just don't want to do something you just want to fucking lie on your bed and do absolutely nothing till you till something can help you or whatever but you're not going to get help you're not going to get sex you're not going to get a partner it's too late you're just going to put up with it until your days are over and you know 
if it does get to a point where it's just going to get unbelievable then obviously you'll have to take your life but the bible says if you take your life you go straight to hell jesus won't do nothing about it the bible violates me in many different ways anything from sexuality against suicide people committing suicide is pray to god and he'll help you well i see that happening yeah i've been to church for two and a half years half a year or just under before i moved to yeovil and every time i've gone to church even in church animal voice sounds to say oh you're a sick vassal ha 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 when a loud bike occurs to erection in the church or right in the middle of praying or singing or whatever you're doing in the church so yeah i can see god helping yeah so that fucking confirms it so i'm not exactly sure who god is but um in recent times i have a different view on all this i think that the creator god is satan jehovah is a demon and that jesus is uh, part of jehovah so I stopped going to all these religious organisations because I'm suspicious that this is where the devil comes. Got to look at it that way because of the way my life's been. So yeah, I don't bother with it anymore. Um, so there is no good news for this year. In fact, 2023, I've not had so many threats this year until uh, September the 15th onwards. But uh, it's all picking up now, it's all getting nasty now, yes. Uh, many people are starting on me every time I go out mistaking me as Seven and Liam. However, the Liam threat's dying out. It just seems to be Seven at the moment. Um, but it's getting nastier. Anything to like the threats I mentioned earlier. To knifing you dead, to smashing your fucking teeth in, bashing your legs and arms off, ripping your fingers out, taking your fucking legs off, taking your arms off, smashing your spine up, bashing your fucking head off, breaking into your place, breaking into all your places making sure all your stuff's gone before we even before we get nasty and fucking smash you up into hospital bed always sexuality or to shoot me dead or whatever or to inject me with disease or venom or whatever so this, these threats are just getting nastier and nastier and fucking nastier um, but there's nothing you can do about it that's the way my life's been set out so there's no good future clairvoyance uh, even last night I sent a message can I have a reading clairvoyance says well, she used a term that It'd be better for you not to pay for the reading at the moment or something like that. I can't remember what she worded it as. She was polite about it, saying, I'd prefer to give you a reading at a better time when things, when I sense that, that, that so when I sense there's more in the way of positive energies around you. That's the way she put it. And that's just last night. So obviously the future's not looking good, is it? After all this torment and torture for the last 42 years, 43 years when I've never had anyone. So I thought I'd mention it just get past it, I've got a catalytic converter control down the back path to a farmhouse basically wherever you go they've got a catalytic converter control now there's nothing you can do about it however they didn't actually time a catalytic converter on the um, hot point walking back that's only three times not three in both directions that's only three times in total since February last year, uh, this year at the still this year at the moment anyway until um, the new year so, you know, they, they are timing it every time. Now we move on to choking catalytic converters. And uh, what's the worst this year for timing a car to reverse something over to car with a catalytic converter to be started as I pass, times as I walk past, to choke me out with uh, raw white vinegar mixed with rubbing crest between two still stainless knives type of smell or um, kind of tomato ketchup mixed in with that, basically. An irritating smell, but... Uh, since I started doing that, I'm going to give you the, the worst this years of the years where it was really bad when they were doing this. And that is 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010 and 2011. 2012 was, there was a lot, there was bad times but for some reason that specific year they dropped the setups for some reason. The setups dropped for that specific year. But it didn't last for long because come August, September of that 2012, they began to step up the setups again. And it included a catalytic converter setup. 2013 was a very bad year for setups and, and frets as well, in fact. Not at home, but while walking about. And uh, 2014 um, and 2015 was bad years for it. Um, 2016 is more getting at me with other, other setups, but I were that, that the, the catalytic converter setup was was occurring. Actually, there hasn't really been any calm years. I think when it comes to the catalytic converter, it's hard to say what year was. Didn't wasn't too bad in 2019, 
for 2020 for 2021 initially until I moved to Yeovil 2022 was a lot in the way of setups but you, the car exhaust wasn't too bad this year hasn't been too bad but it has started to pick up in the last um, sort of July onwards so they are starting that but there's a lot of electric cars a lot of the things they're doing now with the electric cars is timing an electric car around a hidden corner to try and smash into me and then they're diverting me but the catalytic converter setup is basically there's never been a good year for it but uh, if I choose the best year or the nearest year where it wasn't too bad I'd say it would have to be between 2019 and 2023 July 23 because it's picked up again in recent times they'd be the times where it hasn't been so bad for that specific setup taking photographs of old lights or anything like that the worst is two years for taking photographs of lights where they've defeated almost every single picture I've taken is 2022 and 2023 believe it or not but uh, they started the sun curse or causing the sun to come out of every single light that I was taking right from the start of when I was having my first digital camera so sort of 2005 or whatever 2006 whatever you were t I was trying to photograph the Taunton, the old Taunton lights I had to retake the one at Sam Bay in the early days when I first took the photos of the earliest uh, AC Ford street lights down there which is near Western Supermare they've been, literally done it with, when it comes to the lights from day one but it's like, get, I mean, even on the cloudiest of days, what they do is they open the sky up in that specific area. But where it opens up completely, to a point where even if you stay there an hour, you're not going to get um, a picture of it because the sun won't co because the cloud won't cover it. They've been doing that for years, but it's more open today, so they're more open about it today. So rather than just opening sections of the sky, to open in big layers or bigger layers, or even causing the whole country to be sunny on specific days, stop you getting a kind of picture of whatever. So, yeah, they're doing that now, currently. I got into old street lights when I was about eight or nine. Same for the old-fashioned roadwork lights. Um, most people that are on the internet or whatever say that the type of interests I had are not the sort of interests you usually get into around the age of 14 or 15 up. And that's, that's going back quite a few years ago when that was mentioned. And you tend to find that people in their 20s today don't even go into that sort of subject until later on. So people are sort of more... Um, they're more serious, more nasty, people are more serious and nasty today, more dry and sarcastic, more tempered, if, if her accent. But as far as interests go, they're more babyish. They're more sort of don't grow up as quick because uh, or are into sort of younger age interests and what I would have been when back in the day when I was eight or nine. Um, but um, we're in a different time, you know. People were different back in those days. I mean, going back even further back before I was born, I mean, kids were working, you know. So it's different. It's all different today. But yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. What's the worst audio recording I've ever had? Is where I had um, the recordings one minute and seven seconds, or one minute eight seconds, or one minute and sixteen seconds. I can't remember. It was Valentine's Day, two thousand and eight. But unfortunately, the recording I had got confiscated by the police. Um, There's quite literally over a hundred threats in that one recording where people were shouting and breaking in or doing this or doing that, coming from the uh, Palace nightclub. Um, so yeah, that's probably what that was all about. Because um, also the police confiscated my um, Illuminati conspiracy disc discs I bought off of eBay as well. They never gave me them back. Um, but they said as long as you let them have them there'd be no problems without to arrest you or anything like that you know so there have been a lot of different things a lot of problems mostly before I mean when you consider these sorts of problems of you know, arrest or things like cameras going down and they hit you off vehicles parked outside with others which has a scaffolding outside mine and putting the nightclubs on or extra hours or the bar next to me all that sort of thing that you don't get that so much today all the music and TV industry going against you uh, in, in a big scale, in a big way, or media making suggestions that the lighting system down to break in the flat and kill that person that's in there. But you, you get it, but it's not as hard as hitting as what it was before 2012. But um, there's all different things they do today, all different things. But 
you know, I've done videos of this in the past on my older YouTube channels. I mean, literally hours and hours and hours of just mentioning just one subject. I mean, but anyway, I'll leave it there for this subject anyway. Just to let you know, I'm currently doing a video, uh, getting some sunny day pictures to make a uh, documentary. And I'm finding it very difficult to get the uh, obvious as pictures anymore because Google don't supply um, images unless you pay uh, 50 or 60 quid for five images from Photo Bucket or um, well, whatever it is, stock, fo stock photos or whatever you want to call it. You know, take a piss. So you just got to look for the um, old ones that people that are, that are free ones or taking them from my own pictures or me taking them. It's the only way you can do it now. And there's a bit of copyright all over it. So, um, yeah, it's a documentary to explain sunny days and the pictures don't come out on a sunny day, basically. But I've worded it in a way where it looks like this is what pictures would look like on a sunny day. But obviously it's got, still got to be complete and then obviously that's just to explain why pictures don't come out for me on a sunny day. Finally, I've only just found this out as well. I don't know if I've already mentioned it. But I've known about it for about three days, so it might be on the other video I've done, I'm not sure. But one of the labels that produces all the dark ambient, which is Cryo Chamber, um, this is just rumours, I don't know 100% sure how true this is, but apparently they're going to be banned from putting uh, any more music on desks, and apparently they've been told to change their style slightly. So, it means that when they bring out any new albums it's not going to sound the same as the older stuff, where they make it sound very creepy, dark and very um, scary. So it's going to be slightly different. But you know, they have to go by the restrictions they're told to go by, you know. But that time's come, like all the other music, and all is a sub music label as well because not many people are into dark ambient so and it's the only dark ambient label i actually know that produces puts their stuff on audio cds all the others don't put it on cd it's only it's only available on record or download but uh, anyway i'm gonna leave it there for today i'll include the rest of the problems if there is any while walking back right seven loud bikes or erections nothing i can do about it and sounds very very busy considering it's a sunday but um I've actually, I've not heard of this busy for a Sunday, uh, but uh, I'll keep it on film when I get to the bottom of there. I was up here, or was on the bus Christmas time last year. It was definitely not as busy as what it is this year, nor the year before, in fact. It was quite busy, but not as busy as this. The government are going through with a penis up the loud bike issue. I don't know what they're going to do this week. But usually around Christmas they set up and increase it, especially Christmas Day and Boxing Day. I was preparing for it to be um, busy, busier than what it was last year and the year before, but there's only been about 20 cars on this stretch of road at the moment. One lot of colliding out of those 20, that's not too bad. Um, I'll let you know further on. Four photos taken of me. Two threats to uh, beat me up on trial rapist grounds. Uh, my old threats. And 30% uh, setups, at least for now. 